Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I've been a CPA for 25 years and today I'm going to teach you about common invoice payment terms. So an invoice payment term appears on an invoice and it clearly establishes two things. The first is when is that payment due and the second is there any discount for paying the invoice early. So five common invoice terms you should know. The first is payment in advance. Now here the customer is expected to pay the invoice prior to the service being uh, provided. So a common instance of this could be a construction firm requiring a 50% prepayment to help pay for materials prior to the job being started. A second common term is due upon receipt. And so here the customer is expected to pay the invoice immediately. Now in reality due upon receipt does not work very well at all. The problem being is that companies generally don't pay bills on a daily basis. So they receive the invoice, they're going to put it into the approval process, that could take a few days and then it'll sit there until they actually issue checks. And so it's not necessarily realistic to expect a customer to pay a bill upon receipt. And so what happens is they're not going to pay it upon receipt and then they're going to start to wonder well when is this bill actually due? When am I going to be charged a late fee? Is it going to be 14 days? Is it going to be 30 days? I don't know. Um, so, and a problem with the due upon receipt payment term from the issuer standpoint is you don't know when to start collecting a late fee. If you don't have a firm payment due date, when should you start the late fees? Um, so, due upon receipt, it's just not a very effective payment term, and I really advise you to stay away from it. Other common payment terms, so net and then a number. Uh, means that payment on the invoice is due in that many days. So net 30 would be the invoice is due within 30 days. And that time period starts from the date of the invoice to the date that the company actually receives the check. So you would have 30 days from the date of the invoice to get the, to get the check to the company. Other payment terms, so something like 2% net 30. This would mean that the uh, customer can take 2% off of the invoice if they pay within 10 days otherwise the entire amount is due within 30 days and you could have any combination of this so you could have a 1% 10 net 30 you could have a 1% 20 net 30 and so but this is the way you would typically format that and finally you could have a line of credit payment so in this case you're allowing the customer to, uh, to pay the invoice over a period of time by extending them a line of credit, you would still send them an invoice when the job is completed, uh, showing that the charge has been made to their line of credit, um, and then whatever the line of credit terms are would be when they have to pay you. And you might collect interest on that line of credit as well. So how do you choose the best invoice payment terms to include on your invoices to your customers? Well, the first thing you need to look at is your cash flow consideration. So do you have enough cash flow to provide the service that you then bill your customer for? So again, where we really have problems with this are generally construction companies. So if you, if the service is going to cost you $500,000 in materials, then maybe you need to have the customer pay at least a big chunk of that prior to service beginning. Um, another cash flow consideration is uh, what are the payment terms that your vendors extend to you? So if your vendors are constantly requiring you to pay your invoices within 10 days, so a net 10 payment term, then it might be very hard for you to extend 30 days to your customers or a net 30, right? So continually having to pay your bills in 10 days while collecting your receivables in 30 days could create some cash flow problems for your company. The second consideration are industry standards. And so many industries have standard payment terms that customers in that industry have become accustomed to. Um, so I highly recommend you research those. And if your industry does have standard terms, I would start with those payment terms uh, and then only vary from them um, when you have good reason to do so. OK, a third consideration, your customer history. So not all customers have to be given the same payment terms. So um, some long standing customers that have been very good, perhaps they are offered a early payment discount or maybe they're offered a little bit longer payment period. So maybe you give most customers net 30, you give this one really good customer net 60s. Um, 
The only thing I would warn against is make sure that you have a written policy in place as to how you determine payment terms and that you stick to that policy and that you have written proof of how you're following that policy with each customer. And this is basically to avoid any claims of discrimination or being uh, mistreated by your customers. You need to have proof as to why you're providing different customers different payment terms. Um, and the final customer um, consideration are big customers. Big customers sometimes they demand certain payment terms and so especially if you're a small company and you want to do business with a big customer sometimes they'll set their own payment terms. They'll say we'll accept this contract but it's going to be net 60 meaning they have 60 days to pay. Well maybe you generally only give your customers 30 days to pay. Well it's going to have to be decided whether is that customer worth giving 60 days to pay instead of 30 days and for me make sure you consider cash flow from a cash flow standpoint can I afford to provide these services to this customer if I don't get money from them for 60 days perhaps you can't in which case no matter how big the customer you simply can't do it you'll you'll run out of cash so uh, make sure you're careful with the big customers we all love big customers it's fantastic but when they demand their own payment terms make sure that it is something you can afford from a cash flow standpoint. Okay, and finally, the size of the invoice. Uh, the biggest consideration is here, small invoices. You don't want to spend all of your time chasing after small invoices. So I would give them um, early payment discounts, perhaps, you know, the 2%, 10, net 30, um, so that they have incentives to pay quickly so that you don't have a lot, you don't have to spend a lot of time chasing down trying to get these customers to pay. Now, the opposite end of that spectrum are your large invoices. Let's say you have a $100,000 invoice. You may not wish to provide them an early payment discount because you don't want to give them that kind of discount, right? 2% of $100,000 is $2,000. So maybe refrain from giving the early payment discounts on your big invoices. And the other factor there is that big invoices um, are, are more worth your time in chasing down payment for and you also have a lot more recourse with big invoices. So generally $100,000 invoice is probably going to be the result of a contract um, whereas you may not always have such a firm contract with the lower invoices, the smaller invoices. So you'll have a firm contract. Um, oftentimes also with the bigger ones you may have liens against whatever inventory you've sold them or liens against perhaps whatever property you've worked on or repaired. So in general small invoices maybe give them an early payment discount to keep from having to spend time following up with them. Larger invoices maybe Maybe don't give them the discount because it's a little more worthwhile going after full payment and you generally have more recourse. Great, so the last thing I want to do today is let's look at a sample invoice from QuickBooks Online and see what these terms look like in real life. So we can see here we have the terms of the invoice clearly stated, 2%, 10, net 30. We know now that means that you can take 2% off of this invoice if you pay it within 10 days, otherwise it's due in 30 days. Here we have below, at the bottom of the invoice here, we have discount 2%, $6. So here QuickBooks actually shows the customer what the discount will be if they pay within 10 days. Now that's an option you can turn on and off. Sometimes uh, vendors will show that 6% invoice, sometimes they won't. I'm sorry, 2% invoice in this case. Okay, and the other thing, so we have net 30, that means a 30-day payment period, and we can see that's reflected in the due date. So the date of the invoice is April 12th. They have until May 12th to get you the check, um, with, uh, or the invoice will become overdue. Now, with the payment terms, you wouldn't have to necessarily include a due date, right? By looking at net 30, they know when the due date is. You wouldn't have to separately state it. So doesn't hurt to have it on there separately. If you want just one or the other, I would say when you're billing individuals, use the due date because they're not going to be familiar necessarily with payment terms. If you're billing a business, go ahead and use the payment terms instead of the due date because they should be familiar with what they mean. But certainly doesn't hurt anything to include both of them as QuickBooks has done here for Paul's Plumbing. Great, so what's next? Well, if you think you might like QuickBooks Online for your invoicing, you can get started. There's a link below this video um, for a free 30-day trial or 50% off for three months. If you want to learn a little bit more about invoicing with QuickBooks, Fit Small Business has 46 free QuickBooks Online tutorials. They're in both written form and they have videos embedded, um, so whichever you prefer. And I do have a link to those 46 free tutorials in the description below. I hope today 
lesson on invoice terms are as, as useful. And this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business.